Yoran says Deepak's brother Satish picked him up and drove him home. But he also offers an interesting little detail. He says he left without his shoes. Why shouldn't the fact that you left your shoes be seen as a sign of panic? That you were nervous or scared about what had happened there? Because that's not what happened. Why would you forget your shoes? You said you weren't drunk. I'd left them on the beach. I'd walked to the car. We got in the car. And right then there, I couldn't go back because we were going home. In fact, those shoes have never been found. And neither has Natalie Holloway. All right, I'll go first on this one. Um, when Cuomo asks him, why, uh, why would you forget your shoes? He starts smiling. This lets us know he thinks he's gotten away with it. And this is one of the best, if not the best example of Duper's Delight I think we've seen on this channel so far. This is this is almost perfect for that. So he doesn't say why he left him on the beach. And he, and he lets, in other words, he breaks it down in, into what he says happened. He says, I left them on the beach. I walked in the car. We got in the car. Right then, right there. I couldn't go back because we were going home. So he starts off saying, I left them on the beach. I walked to the car. Then he says, we got in the car. That right there tells me something's up, that there there may have been one more than one person there, beside, uh, more than him being there. Somebody helped him with it. Once whatever happened, happened, he told somebody and they helped him with it. Be these two guys he's been dealing with, or you know, his friends that, or his buddy is supposed to come pick him up, whatever. There's somebody else involved in this, I would think, from the way that sounds. Um, that's what I'm under the impression of. I'll leave it right there. Greg, what do you got? Yeah, I, and when you see Duper's Delight, I see arrogance, pompousness, entitlement, and anger. Mm -hmm. That's what I see in all that stuff. And I'm like, I love those personality traits because I know how to work those. We have tools for working those. When I see him show contempt in his face immediately when his exaggerated storytelling is not working, I think I'm seeing entitlement. I think he's pissed that Chris Cuomo has challenged him about his shoes. This is the first place he's really challenged him. I think if you sp if you poked him a little bit, you'd get a very different behavior than he's done to now. This is pronounced. I think you're starting to hit entitlement. You also see, I mean, when that much contempt shows up in somebody's face, you've done something. You've hit some button. Or you're too close to the truth. And so that's the way they push you off. This is the second most important video to me now. Number two, where he was hiding time. Now this one where he's showing me who he is. The only brow movement we've seen earlier, there was one piece, a little bit of movement. And now we see an exaggerated brow movement. When they ask him about his shoes, I left them on the beach. There's an exaggerated movement, a sniff. And so that is out of out of, out of character for him, out of baseline. And then he does. Is this micro? I don't know, but he's got his brow down in telling. This progressively makes me think he's got elements he wants to get out and make sure he covers his story. And that if you poke him enough, you'd get something out of him. So this gives me an element of how to go after him next time. And whoever's going to interrogate this guy, poke on that. I'm sure you know, you've got plenty of video from him and his murder trial and all those kinds of things. But poke this guy, take away his entitlement and watch what happens. Uh, Chase, what do you got? Uh, two things are very apparent here. Uh, there's a smile, Scott, you, uh, where you saw Duber's Delight. I saw uh, maybe one of two things. If he's innocent, and I want to continue to think if he's innocent, what context would I be seeing? What would I be seeing here? This smile could indicate that the question is pretty stupid, which it kind of is. But if he's guilty and a monster, uh, which might be likely here, the smile is, I think, in response to him being hypothetically referred to as nervous and scared, which insulted his feeling of manhood, to which he refers to later in this exact same clip. So there's an increase in blink rate uh, when he's talking about leaving the shoes on the beach. And our blink rate is how fast or how often we're blinking. And it goes up to uh, when we feel stress. It goes down when we feel focus. There's not a whole lot of clusters here in this video, but keep in mind, we aren't in control of this interview and we cannot control these questions here. Uh, the questions aren't very good. And even more importantly, there's nothing that I can see being done here to increase the two critical factors. Number one is increasing anxiety associated with deception. Number two, increasing the seriousness and gravity of the interview. Uh, that's about all I got there.
Mark, what do That's you That's okay, Chase. Buckle up. The next one, we'll get to see a little yeah. bit of that. <laughs> All right. So uh, I was born in one of Europe's most important shoe towns. So I know something about shoes. We even have a shoe museum. Uh, so uh, you could go to the shoe museum and learn all you needed to know about shoes. Shoes are super important because they give us that sense of safety. They they help us walk long distances. We feel more uh, aggressive if we're wearing shoes, more passive if we take our shoes off. Remember that story of Cinderella, which is with the story of Cinderella is about inside something ordinary is something extraordinary. You know, a, la- a rat can turn into a coachman, an ordinary pumpkin into a, a, a beautiful uh, g- gilt uh, coach. And uh, she escapes at midnight and leaves her shoes behind. Why? Because she panics. She panics. And so th- that symbol of leaving your shoes is an idea of emotional panic. Why? Because it's True. If you're so panicked that you forget those shoes, then seriously, something is going on inside an ordinary story. Something extraordinary is going to be going on. And my guess is on that beach, something extraordinary happened there, something that most likely you and I and most everybody watching this have never done something quite extreme happened out of an ordinary situation of being on a beach so extreme that you would forget your shoe. You might even take them off in the first place. Uh, why would we want to do that by a, by a beach? Often because you need to go into the water. You maybe take your, why would you want to go into the water and then be so panicked that you have to run away and forget your shoes? Well, let's, let's see what happens in this uh, uh, grim uh, tale. The eyewitness is you. Yoran says Deepak's brother Satish picked him up and drove him home. But he also offers an interesting little detail. He says he left without his shoes. Why shouldn't the fact that you left your shoes be seen as a sign of panic? That you were nervous or scared about what had happened there? Because that's not what happened. Why would you forget your shoes? You said you weren't drunk. I'd left them on the beach. I'd walked to the car. We got in the car, and right then there, I couldn't go back because we were going home. In fact, those shoes have never been found, and neither has Natalie Holloway. If you like this video, get the full body language breakdown and analysis on our main channel by clicking this video right here.